Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of Intercast. I'm Tasha Jamin, the International Understanding Directress of the Indian District Council 3 and I'll be your host for today. Today we have a discussion of a very important topic which is mental health and we have with us today Dr. Theoni Chandrasena to enlighten us further on this topic. First and foremost, Doctor, we thank you for taking your time off your busy schedule to be with us here today to enlighten us on this very important topic. Before we proceed, Doctor, could you give us a brief introduction to yourself and your profession? Certainly. Thank you very much, Tasha, for having me. Um, so my background is quite varied. I never started out in psychology. Um, I started out actually in anthropology, went to medicine, and then decided that I actually wanted to be um, a psychologist. Um, so I've done a lot of postgraduates. Um, my um, focus is mainly I do um, individual therapy um, and I use cognitive behavior therapy, which is one form of therapy, um, to help people. Right. All right. Great. That's great, Doctor. Um, so as I mentioned before, Doctor, I think mental health is a very, a very growing topic, especially in today's youth. Could you give us a brief uh, explanation of the roots of mental health and stages of mental health? Okay. Um, so I think it's in Sri Lanka, especially mental health is now becoming um, more, um, or oh. coming more to the forefront. Um, I think for a long time, we didn't have a lot of awareness about it. Um, so when we think of mental health, um, we have to think of it in the same way that we think of physical health. Right? So it is something that's uh, with us all along. So it's not something that we have to attend to only when there is a problem. Right? So usually people focus on mental health only when there is a problem. Um, children as young as two to three years old do have mental health. And so we need to pay attention to and look at how we focus on that. And those need to be started again at school level and coming up. Um, so if I was to look at some of the things that for young people, so um, we don't look at mental health um, from the DSM or the ICD criteria in most children below the ages of about 10 years old, right? But older than that, we think of um, a lot of them are emotional um, disorders that we have. So we talk about anxiety, we talk about depression. Um, we have um, things like um, eating disorders, so anorexia, bulimia, um, and they seem to increase in teenage years. Um, so these are all things that we need to be aware of. Right. Uh, so talking about uh, issues like uh, anxiety and whatnot, right, Doctor? Especially in our households, in a brown household, in a usual brown household, mm -hmm. I think parents tend to neglect um, certain topics like. Even if we do go to our parents and say, you know, um, I might be suffering from anxiety or such instances, they would say, you know, uh, don't be stupid. It's not something uh, to, you know, um, to think about and whatnot. So, but exactly uh, what advice would you give to the adults or parents, um, especially in brown households, if in case um, a child is to suffer of such? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I would say, uh, bottom line is, I would say to parents, when your children bring a concern to you, pay attention to it, right? So um, one of the things that um, as teenagers, maybe I would say it, um, to kids is understand that your parents grew up in a world that's very different to what you're growing up in now, right? So words like anxiety, depression weren't used. And in taking our um, social and cultural norms, if we talked about mental health, we talked about people who were mad, quote unquote, right? And who belonged in, you know, some mental institution. Um, so understand that, right? The other thing that I would always caution um, our teenagers is, please don't self-diagnose. While I love Google, it's not a doctor, right? And there's a lot out there that's not verified information. So um, we can have certain symptoms, Right. And then uh, we Google it and we're convinced that we have something. So what I'd like you all to do is focus on how you are feeling. Understand that what we feel is important to us, but it's just an indicator. It's not necessarily true. 
So what we want to do is go and tell our parents something along the lines of, look, I'm feeling really overwhelmed by what I've been asked to do, and I don't know how to approach it. Right? And I feel like I'm spending more time worrying about it than actually doing the work. Right. Right? So maybe approaching it in that manner um, helps parents to understand and helps them put perspective, right? Um, and I think because if we think of it from a parent's point of view, one of the things that we worry about, right, is that something is wrong with our child, right? And so we almost as parents have a knee-jerk reaction when somebody comes and says, I think I have anxiety or I'm depressed. Right? There's almost a knee-jerk reaction of, no, you're not. What do you mean? You're, you know, like, it's, it's almost like a reflection of our parenting. Right. So maybe going to them with something that's slightly more gentle so that we can ask them for help and say, look, I, I feel like I need to speak to somebody right, to help me through this, um, I think is a, is a nicer approach. Right. Okay. Um, also, I believe that um, self-control or um, having to control your emotions is a major part of uh, dealing with mental health. Right. Mm -hmm. So... Um, being mindful, having less expectations would also be a few things to control your emotions. What other ways do you think, Doctor, um, we could um, enforce in, in order to um, basically be mindful about um, having self -emo uh, our emotions controlled? Okay, All right. So I'm going to just uh, check you on that word control, right? right? Because what we want to do is what's called emotionally regulate. Right? Now, one of the things that we have to understand is emotional regulation for children is modeled by parents. Right? So, us telling a child not to get angry and yell, but when we get angry at our child and yell, doesn't send the right message. Right? Because our child looks at us and goes, well, when mom is angry, she yells. So, then that's how I'm supposed to react to it. Right? Because that's how we learn. So, what we want to do is to understand that emotions are signals, right? They're telling us something's going on here, right? So if you're sad, it's saying, look, I'm something is not sitting well with me. Something is causing me to feel sad, right? So also language, it's not I am sad, it's I feel sad because it's a feeling, it's momentary and it will pass, right? So when we look at that emotion in that way and say, okay, I feel sad at the moment, Right? So it's giving me an indicator. Right? So now how should I manage that emotion? Right? So we emotionally regulate by, so if we need to cry, we cry. If we need to write that down, we write it down. If we need to call somebody up and speak to someone, we do that. Right? So we manage that emotion. So we don't control it. We acknowledge the fact that we have the emotion. So I am sad. Right? I'm feeling sad at this moment in time. So how am I going to handle that feeling, right? So the things you talked about, like mindfulness, um, meditation, right, all help us, right? It helps us to manage our emotions, right? So um, I, um, one of the things that I always suggest to our young people is one of the easiest ways in which we manage our um, emotions is with good sleep, right? So a good night's sleep, right? is absolutely essential, right? And I, and I understand, I, I've got teenagers at home, so the temptation to be on your phone till midnight, to be on Netflix and on all those different things, we need rest. So when we rest well at night, we can regulate our emotions better during the day. So whatever comes our way, we are better equipped because our mind is rested, our body is rested, and we're better able to deal with things. Right. Um, also, Doctor, in today's youth, especially in Sri Lanka, uh, what exactly are the numbers, uh, what exactly do you think are the numbers of people suffering from uh, mental health and what exactly do you think uh, the youth could do or why exactly is the youth suffering from mental health issues in Sri Lanka? Yes. So, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of recent studies done. Right? But the WHO, so I'm going to look down at my paper because I don't remember numbers. Right? So um, we, we, there's between uh, 4 to 5 percent of 15 to 19 year olds that suffer from anxiety and between 2 to 3 percent of 15 to 19 year olds who suffer from depression. Now, I think that number is quite low, actually, right? Because it, there's not been recent studies done. Um, I think the numbers are significantly higher. 
Um, however, um, I also think sometimes these words get thrown around quite a bit, right? So it's important. It's really good that we are more aware of mental health, but it's also important that we use words in the right context, right? So for example, for the diagnosis of depression, right, we need two weeks of persistent bad mood or sad, low mood, right? So we can have sadness, it comes and goes. That's one of the things that I think, again, we need um, the youth to understand. We're not going to be happy all the time, right? It's a, it's a sort of an up and down. What we want is a gentle up and down. So we will have bad things that happen to us. We will feel sad, we will feel hurt, right? But it comes and goes. So for depression to be diagnosed, we have to have persistent low mood for two weeks. It's a loss of interest in doing what we normally do. It's a desire to just be home, not get up. Um, it can be anything from not eating to overeating, you know, not sleeping to oversleeping. Um, and what's really important is we need somebody professional to diagnose that. Um, why is there an, um, a sort of a increase in mental health? One is awareness, so we're more aware of it, right? People are talking about it more. Um, the other is we have a lot of distractions now, right? So we have social media, right? We have um, uh, lots of expectations that have increased by parents, by, you know. So, for example, when I was growing up, my comparison was my cousin. You know, look at your cousin. She's doing so well. Why aren't you studying as much, right? Now your comparison is the entire world. Right? So you know what your cousin, you know, living in America is doing, right? And so so the, the, the increase in that, right, is also the reason for that um, you know, increase in um, anxiety and depression. Right. Um, like I mentioned before, I think parental pressure, like I mentioned as well, parental pressure would be um, another reason of why um, mm -hmm. youth especially has an increase of mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly would you um, advise parents uh, in order to help the youth um, or for them to, um, you know, make sure that their children do not get into the worst of uh, scenarios? Right. So it would seem simple enough. Don't pressurize your children. Right. right. So understand that your children are not you. They are not an extension of you. They are not meant to achieve what you didn't achieve. Right. So um, you may want what is best for your child, which as parents we do. Uh, only difference, we don't know what's best for our child because our child is an individual, right? So it's really important that from a young age, and when I say young age, we're talking five to six years old, that we start having conversations with our children, understanding what is it that they like, um, um, what is it that they want to do, um, and what, as parents, we are supposed to do is to guide them, not tell them what to do, but guide them. So if we feel that, um, and, and sometimes parents do, if we feel that, look, you know, sports is something that every child should play, or I would like my child to play a sport, it's a conversation we have with our child, right? And maybe that child isn't going to play a sport, right? So it's us understanding that as parents, while we want what's best for them, we don't necessarily know that. So we need to engage in conversation. Right. Right. Apart from conversation, um, if any child out there or if anyone from you is suffering from a depression or anxiety or any of that sort, what exactly, um, what exactly could they do apart from having conversation or asking for help? Um, what medical advice do you think uh, you could give? Right. So my first thing would be is to reach out to someone professionally, right? So um, your usually your general physician, the one that you go and see, your pediatrician sometimes is your first port of call. Um, now, there are also lots of free resources. So for example, like kalyana.org, there's Sumitreo, there's 1333. Um, so there are mental health um hotlines and, and um, institutes that are available where you can reach out and they have, um, you know, um, free um, help 24 hours. Um, so you can start with those places, right? Um, also understand that it's, we don't necessarily need to talk to everybody because not everybody has our best interests at heart. 
Um, so in schools, sometimes it's reaching out. I know now schools, lots of schools have school counselors, so reaching out to your school counselor, reaching out to, if your parents are not people you can speak to, maybe reaching out to an aunt, an uncle, uh, you know, that, that you know has always been supportive of you and has helped. So it's reaching out to an adult within a safe space. Right. Apart from um, all of this stuff, I believe even myself, like we are engaged in a lot of things such as um, our studies, uh, extra activities, hobbies, whatnot, right? I believe uh, all of that together can be a little overwhelming, um, especially for the youth. Mm -hmm. How exactly do you think the youth can balance um, all of this in order to avoid them from going insane, I'd say? Okay. Um, so I think it's important when we take things on board to understand why we are doing what we do. Right? So obviously going to school is something that we have very little choice in, right? but what we engage in outside of that, we need to understand why are we doing this, why are we taking it on board, is it something that I really want to do, is it something I'm doing because my parents think it's a good idea, right? um, am I um, trying to uh, have my parents love and appreciate me uh, more, the, like the more I do, right? is that why I'm doing it? And so it's important that we do two things. One is that we have to look at what's within my control and what's not. Right. So what is not within my control, I can do nothing about. So therefore spending time worrying about that doesn't help anything. Right. So instead, you focus on what is within your control. Right. So and once you focus on that, then you know that you've got a pathway which you need to follow. Right. Um, the other things that you can do is understand that rest is really important, right? So we tend to judge productivity by how much we achieve, right? Um, but productivity is also rest. Productivity is also taking time out and saying, look, I'm exhausted. I just need a day off, right? Taking time for yourself. So again, back to things like good sleep habits, um, good eating habits, so actually eating on time. Right. Um, also doing something that you like to do. So it may be regular exercise, it may be listening to music, it may be reading a book. Right? Take time every day and set a little bit of time out to do those things as well because it's really important because that's what sort of rejuvenates every one of us. And the more we look at um, achievement as doing and doing and doing and doing and not taking a break, right? we're going to lead to burnout. Right, at which point we are, we are not going to want to do anything. Right. Okay, Doctor. Um, apart from your uh, profession, uh, what hobbies do you have um, to keep yourself occupied? Right. So I'm an avid reader. Right. right. So that's my, um, when I need time away, I uh, go somewhere quiet, wear myself a coffee and I read. Right? And that's something I do on a daily basis. So even when I do go home, um, I go home to a house of four children and two dogs. Um, but what I do is I usually walk in and I say hello to everybody. And then I say, hey, you know what? I need half an hour of time. Right? And I go up to my room and I just relax for half an hour. And I don't interact with anybody. And that's my sort of de-stressing time. Right? And that's when, and everybody should do that because they do need that for themselves also. So I think time, uh, taking time off for yourself is something that's important. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I think this conversation so far has been very um, serious because mental health is an important topic uh, that has to be addressed. So doctor, can we get into a little um, ice-breaking kind of a topic where I could ask you if there has been any fun story or funny story of yourself as a psychologist throughout your career? Um, okay, so I, I guess for me, I, I, for me it's generally funny and even before this session. So every time I sit with somebody, I'm constantly, I constantly worry about whether I will know what to say and what to do. So even given the, the fact that I have the educational background, right, it's when somebody comes to me newly and sits in front of me, I think, oh my gosh, am I going to know what to say? Am I going to know what to do? Right. So, and, and I constantly find myself smiling at those things. Right. Yeah. Okay, Doctor. Um, before we end today's session, I'd like to ask you if there's anything that you want to advise the youth on, or if you have any uh, specific phrase or anything of that sort that you want to uh, give out a message, basically. Right. 
So I think my message would be progress, not perfection, right? So what we aim for is progress. We can never get perfection, right? Because perfection looks different to everybody. And incidentally, perfection is a trauma response, right? So we want to focus on progress. So what am I doing today that's better than what I did yesterday, right? So little, little things of progress is what we want to focus on. Right? And that makes life a lot easier than trying to be perfect in what we do, right? because we can't. Right. That brings us to the end of the third episode of Intercast. I hope that you guys gain knowledge on this important topic of mental health. And we thank Dr. Theoni Shantasena for giving her time to enlighten us. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you.